a two point charges plus five micro coulombs and minus two micro coulombs are kept at a distance of one meter in free space. The distance between the two zero potentials points on the line joining the charges is. So basically, if you have a positive charge and you have a negative charge, so let me first keep a positive charge over here. This is my positive charge, five plus five micro coulomb, and let me place the uh, negative charge over here, minus two micro coulomb over here. And both are separated by what distance? One meter. So this gap in between them is one meter. We have to figure out those two points where the potential is zero due to the system. Let me repeat again. We have to first figure out those two points where the net potential due to those two charges is zero. There are two such points. One point will be always in between the two, and one point will be somewhere away from the smaller charge. We will figure it out. Okay. Then we have to figure out what is the distance between these two points. So let me assume that my first point at which the potential is zero is point P. Let's assume our second point at which the potential is zero is point Q. And let's say the gap from the first charge is x one. Then what will be the gap from the second charge? It will be one minus x one. I hope no one has any doubt. Now let's figure out the potential at point P. Let's call this first charge as charge A, and the second one as charge B. Let's figure out the potential at point P due to the first charge. So V P due to A will be equals to K. Let me just keep it initially as K only. No need of putting it as nine into ten to the power nine. That we will see at the end. Into charge, which is five micro coulomb, five into ten to the power minus six, whole divided by the separation, which is x one. I hope this is clear. This is your equation one. The net potential at point P due to A is V P A, that is K Q by R. By now, all of you remember this relation. We have done so many problems. What's the potential at point P due to the charge B? That will be K. The second charge, and let me remind you, potential is a scalar quantity, so you have to take the negative sign. Let me repeat again. Potential is a scalar quantity; you have to take the negative sign. Whole divided by what's the separation between P and B? One minus x one. I hope this is clear. This is your second equation. Now we have to find the net potential at point P. The net potential at point P will be V P. And that will be the sum of V P A plus V P B. And what should be the net potential at point P? As we all already know from the question, it says the net potential at point P must be zero because these are zero potential points. So V P must be zero. Let's put it zero here. Now what will be V P A? That will be equals to K into five into ten to the power minus six. Whole divided by x one minus y minus because of this minus two, that will be k into two into ten to the power minus six whole divided by one minus x one. I hope this is clear. Now let's take the second term on the left hand side. So this will become k into two into ten to the power minus six whole divided by one minus x one. And on the right hand side, it will be k into five into ten to the power minus six whole divided by x one. Let's cancel out the common terms. So k will cancel out here with this, and ten to the power minus six will cancel with this. Now let's cross multiply. So two x one will be equals to five minus five x one. So seven x one will be equals to five, which implies. Our first point at which the potential is zero is five by seven from the first charge. I hope this is clear. Anyone has any doubt or not understood up till here? Speak up. Okay, great. Let's move on the right hand side and see our second point. So let's move on the right hand side. Let's figure out at Q. Let's say Q is another point. Where the potential is zero, 
so let me take this as x2 x2 is the gap from the second charge which is b so what will be the potential due to charge a at q it will be k the charge at a what is the charge at a 5 micro coulombs whole divided by the separation now what's the separation between a and q a and b is 1 meters so a and q will be 1 plus x2 1 plus x2 i hope this is clear now the second one vbq that will be the potential due to the second charge that will be k the charge placed at the second point which is minus 2 into 10 to the power minus 6 whole divided by the gap between b and q that will be equals to how much x2 i hope this is clear so let's find the total or the net potential at q that will be equals to the sum of both so vq will be equals to k into 5 into 10 to the power minus 6 upon 1 plus x2 minus k into 2 into 10 to the power minus 6 whole divided by x2. Since vq the net potential at point q is 0, so this will be 0 equals to k into 5 into 10 to the power minus 6 whole divided by 1 plus x2 minus k into 2 into 10 to the power minus 6 whole divided by x2. Now, if you take this on the left hand side, this will become k into 2 into 10 to the power minus 6 upon x2 and on the right hand side it will be k into 5 into 10 to the power minus 6 upon 1 plus x2. Now we can cancel here k with k and 10 to the power minus 6 with 10 to the power minus 6. So which implies 2 into 1 plus x2 and that is equals to 5 x2. So 2 plus x2, 2x2 2 is equals to 5x2 and 2 by 3 is equals to x2. So this gap, the point q is 2 by 3 meters away from whom? Away from the second charge b. So x2 is 2 by 3, x1 is 5 by 7. Let us read our question once again. So the question says the two point charges plus 5 micro coulombs and minus 2 micro coulombs are kept at a distance of 1 meter in free space. The distance between the two zero potential points. So what is the first zero potential point? Point P. And what is the second zero potential point? Point Q. What is the gap between them? So if this is 5 by 7, what will be your PB? PB will be 1 minus 5 by 7 which is 2 by 7. So PB is the gap plus BQ. So this is the gap between point P and Q because PQ is equals to PB plus BQ. And what is PB? PB is 2 by 7 and BQ is 2 by 3. So let us cross multiply 6 plus 14 upon 21. So this will be 20 upon 21. So, correct answer is option D.